like the ocean love you in slow motion anything it takes to make you stay but i can't rely on you doesn't matter what i do you say you need a time i think you mean a buyout because it's pretty clear you're on your way Yes. 
back with another show we're happy to be here and you know i just i just want to say that i appreciate um i appreciate everybody for stopping through the people that will come the people that are here i appreciate you and just you know you could be anywhere doing anything but you know you're right here and you're kicking it with me and i i appreciate that i appreciate that i'm re i'm really grateful for that i really can't say that enough um Guys, I want to have a conversation today because, as you can see by the title, I'm not really happy. And honestly, <laughs> where do I where where do we start, right? Because we could we could we could we could talk about things and situations like you know like the Diddy the Diddy raid, and I could talk about how that applies, you know um to to my my overall message and point and that is that black culture is is, is trash and sh and is something that needs to be divested from now saying that i, I like always I, I like to to preface and actually support what i'm saying you know because you can't assume that people you know people have watched everything that you've made or people have listened to everything that you've said so when i say black culture is trash I'm saying that I believe that the that the culture is trash because it supports and celebrates the worst things for it, the negativity, the 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 things that do it do that causes people the worst harm, the the things that sets people on the wrong path. That's that's really what I'm talking about when I when I speak of black culture. It's not just a subset of of of, of uh, of black culture where you say hip hop like hip hop culture no i don't believe that i believe that culture is a representation um uh, or is best is best influence or reflected by what we see in the youth right so when we look at the youth the youth are like blank canvases right so they only they only reflect what what has been put into them what they've seen and what and what has been what been what has been put into them uh so when when the youth when the youth um when they basically let's see i'm i'm, I'm sorry i'm trying to make sure that i just say this correctly but when the youth represent or reflect what we see in the culture doesn't that gives you an indication of where that, that that culture, that society, that community is headed, and culture is not it, it, there. You can't just like section off cultures and just say, "Oh, they don't reflect the culture." When I say the black culture, I'm talking about that's the things that is that that we that we everything that we put in that we put out and put in. That is that is the culture, and. I I don't know. It's just it. it hmm. Let's see. Let first um. Let's see. First things first. Um. First things first. Uh. Gonna acknowledge these comments. Uh. These comments. Um. Angel Marshall says the topic is a lot more concerning. We're not getting any younger. The life choices we make is how we are looked at. That's actually. A, a great comment and a great segue because actually the first thing that I want to do, uh, and thank you for your comments, Angel. Um, the first thing that I want to do is actually look at what I feel like might, <laughs> or is how how we are looked at, the choices we make or how we look or how we looked at, but when we look at the media, the media that we put out, the media that we consume. That's a telltale sign of where the culture is. So I want to look at this real quick. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there ain't no copyright issues. Hopefully. 
All right, guys. Let's see. This is the good times. <laughs> they cover the good times. Uh, I know. I know you guys. Most black people they know about the good times, and the old. I mean, this is. Let's just look. Let's look. I have important news. Let me guess. The state called, and they want to cut you a disability check for your face. Hold up. You can get paid for that? This is from a fool who stares at his orange juice every morning. It says concentrate on the box. <laughs> who the first things first, my first reactions to this, uh, <laughs> this it's kind of it's kind of goofy. It kind of reminds me like a fat owl with her baby's kids or something like that. It's kind of <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um and why they make him so big? <laughs> Did y'all see that how huge he was? I mean now. Shit. Me for not wearing a condom. Woo! Shadows fall over my heart. It all started with my grandfather, James. Oh, um, shout out to Robert Oliver. He the one that put me on this. Uh, Robert, uh, <laughs> Robert Oliver says, good times. Anytime you meet a payment, good times. <laughs> you need a friend, good times. Nah, keep hustle. Keep wasting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man see uh, yeah it's just certain certain stuff man yeah yeah people <laughs> it's just yeah they should have just left it alone they should just left it alone it's like if you're not gonna do it right like you know what i mean it's like mm, yeah i don't have good impressions so far guys <laughs> spoiler alert Evans. My job as the man of this house is to take care of this family no matter what. I just want to let you know I'm going to take good care of Gray. <laughs> Gray, who is this n I'm about to kill? Juan, my boyfriend. Daddy, let him go. Baby, you should come with me. Junior's repeating the 10th grade for the third time. Is there anything you can suggest to help him get to the drive through Can you do OnlyFans? <laughs> take off your shoes. Let me see what kind of feet you're working with. <laughs> No, so I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, like I'm saying, my my early impressions of this is just I feel like it's just um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, it's those type of show. Uh, yeah, um, it's like black uh black uh, black uh black exploitation, but it's kind of like the if anybody knows, yeah, ghetto fabulous is a good um is a good word, Robert, uh, or a good phrase, but. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It's like those shows where they literally, where they highlight the worst, the worst aspects, and they try to hum, um, basically, like, make it humorous about the worst aspects of black, of black culture and black society. Cause it, and it's not social commentary because that's what the Boondocks was. The Boondocks, if you, if you watch the Boondocks, the Boondocks was a great example of social commentary and make like. Uh, you know, I don't want to get copywritten, so I don't know if I can if I'll be able to play any of that. But you know what I'm saying? Like, if if, if you're familiar with the Boondocks, if, or if you're not familiar with them, look look that up and compare that to this, and and you'll see like there's a good way to to represent black uh, black folks and use humor in order to illustrate a point, satire. But yeah, uh, this just looks like it's just. You know what I mean? It's just, I get, yeah, it's just ratchet. <laughs> this is just ratchet. I'm not even gonna lie. I took you to the dark side. Dear Black Heavenly Father, College Redeemer, uh, if you could just help us. Son, it's for you. New phone, who this? All black, everything. At least they ain't got that drug dealing baby under my roof no more. Mm, man, my mouth ready for some milk right now. Dalvin, why are you so breast obsessed? It's childish, man. Bruh, I'm a baby. I can't get no more childish than that. In a nocturnal state of mind. Your neighborhood is a real shithole. It's the system. They put the guns and drugs on the streets. Underneath this black, black sky. This is getting dangerous. I won't just sit back and let you put yourself in harm's way. I love you too damn much. Everything, everything black. The revolution will not be televised. Oh, 
Come on, Rosa Paws, can't you just enjoy this? We're just as good as the Evans of old. Isn't that just dynamite? But the truth is, we're the Evans of new. Bitch, you look like money. What about the struggle? We're black. It'll be here tomorrow. Everything black, black bird, black moon, black sky, black light, black, everything black. Wait a minute. The baby, little baby, and baby baby. <laughs> this is crazy. Why are they doing this? Like, and look, I'm going to be honest. I have a sense of humor, right? So it's like, yeah, like me, you know what I mean? I could find entertainment in something like this. But if we're just being real, let's just let's just let's just take off the the hats and really look at this for what this is. This is this is a prime example of what I'm talking about when I say that the media and the way we're rep <laughs> we're represented, or the way we choose to represent ourselves, it just sucks. It sucks because like, wasn't the good time like the good times that was supposed to be like that was the idea? I'm not saying like they were like the the wholesome blacks, but I'm just saying it's just oh my god, it's just like this is just ridiculous. And it, it's like it's just so obvious that it's a cat, like just vir it's like black virtue signaling. Uh, ugh, ugh, it's, it's just gross. Um. <laughs> Robert Oliver says, blackity, black, black, black. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and he says, and the whitey, white, white CEO of Netflix will get over with this. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I be trying to tell people. Like, I mean, if we just being honest, it's just capitalism. I mean, it's really capitalism. The only people I will say, like, oh, is it? It's it's almost nefarious, you know what I mean? Because it's like on on, a, on one hand, it's like you know that if this kind of stuff wasn't making money, those white CEOs would not be a pushing it and endorsing it. But you also know that there are blacks that really enjoy this kind of stuff, so. At the end of the day, it's st it would still get pushed. So who do you really blame for that? You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this stuff is it, it's not coming out of nowhere. You know what I mean? So it's like, ugh. It's like, like I said, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here in front like I couldn't find entertainment out of a show like that. You know what I mean? I get bored. You know what I mean? I I, I have a dark sense of humor. Maybe it could be funny, but no, I mean. If we really being honest, this, this, all this show is doing is basically just putting, it's just making a mockery of the worst aspects of black culture. And that's just, that's really what, I mean, if, if we're really going to be honest, that's what it's Too many babies around this crib. <laughs> but I agree with you, Robert. The uh, white CEOs are definitely going to make a lot of money. They're going to make a lot of money. They're going to make a lot of money, and as they should, because I feel like I feel like if black people are stupid enough to 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 allow allow other races to profit off of them the way they do, then maybe they should maybe they deserve it. And I hate to say that, but it's the truth, because. When you make stuff like this, all you doing is pushing the narrative, you could have easily you could have easily just as well made a good time show that that paints black people in a positive light that doesn't highlight and glamorize and try to glorify ratchet culture. You could have just as easily done that. But no, you want to make a ratchet remake of a classic of, of a classic black sitcom. And guess what? I mean, do what you do, but don't complain about how the white people treat you. Don't complain about how people People treat you. I mean, all they doing, this is just highlighting ghetto culture. It's highlighting ghetto culture. And how can you sit there and get mad when people judge you about that? That's concerning. That's really concerning. <laughs> Trying.
trying too hard. And that's what that's really that's really how it comes across. It, it comes across as just trying too hard. Ugh. It just comes across as trying way too hard. And I mean Hmm. Hmm. Maybe y'all, th- maybe y'all get tired of hearing me say the same thing. Maybe we should, like, cause I can't be the only person. Like, I have important news. Let me guess. Let's this- check out this. Dismantle the wholesome, family-focused classic series. Good times. They've turned good times into a mix of Bebe's kids and Boondocks. It all started with my grandfather James Evans. My job as the man of this house is to take. Hey, now I just want to say, like I said, I want to be fair. Like I said, guys, this show reminds me of of, of Bebe kids a lot. What it doesn't remind me of Boondocks, but and the reason why I say that. It's because Boondocks is actually, it's funny. And it's not just funny because it's funny. It's funny because it's it's actually the purpose of it. If you're familiar with the series Boondocks, it's about, it's social commentary. You know what I mean? It's social commentary through the form of satire. So the Boondocks is not the same as Bebe Kids. So I'm not, we can't, we can't, we, nah, we can't do that. Yeah, this family, no matter what. I just want to let you know, I'm going to take good care of Greg. Who is this? Come on, my boyfriend. Daddy, let him go. Now look at who. <laughs> RJ says that's an insult to the boondocks, and I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree. Aaron McGruger, he did he did a great thing with the Boondocks. I think the Boondocks was a great show. Is I feel like when you when you take like when you get past the really uh, like silly humor and all that kind of stuff, it's a lot of it's a lot of messages and you know, it's not about the it's not about the the humor so much. It's about how you use the humor in order to tell your story or portray your story. This it just looks like it's just get like I said glorifying ghetto ratchetness. I don't I don't necessarily see, you know. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, good point. <laughs> good point. <laughs> good point, RJ. RJ says ah, Seth McFarlane <laughs> honestly says a lot. Yep. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, thanks, RJ and Roberts. Thanks for stopping through. Um, Executive okay, produced well. this garbage. Yeah, I called it garbage. This is just a trailer, and it's already glorifying the worst aspects of ghetto culture that people have applied and made it seem like it's synonymous with black culture. Look at the executive producer. Steph Curry had the audacity to produce this monster of a cartoon show. This is worse than the Proud Family because what this does, this shows you where we are as a society and where we are in the black culture. A show like Good Times couldn't. (laughs) This guy is hard body. Hold on, who is this? (laughs) The biblical conservative. Oh, yeah, he's hard body. I feel like um, I honestly I, I I couldn't get into that new proud family <laughs> just just speaking on what he said so I can't really speak on that I couldn't get into the new the the new <laughs> like uh I yeah I just can't do it because the new proud family it just seemed like it was trying too hard the old proud family I could rock with it I'm not gonna lie I rock with it I grew up on the uh, on the old proud family but the new one mm-mm. And a lot of these new black cartoons, I'm just not, I'm not rocking with them. If I'm really being honest, I'm really being honest. Boondocks is probably the only one. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, RJ, uh, St- uh, Steph Curry. That's yeah, he's a basketball player. Great. Yeah. Just, <laughs> 
Um, Robert Oliver said, Seth MacFarlane is a great black leader who is down with the struggle. He marched with Joe Biden in the Civil Rights Movement. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny for real. Maybe I'm getting trolled. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's funny, Robert. You got me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but, um, to not survive today because you will have to make it. Why do all the black shows have to be so vulgar, so debaucherous, so full of lawlessness to the point? Now, that's a great question that I also have. Like, why is it that all the black shows just have to be so outrageous, so over the top, so obnoxious? And, and, and it, it, it's hard to say. It's hard to, to, to really believe that it's not intentional, if I'm really being honest. It's hard to believe that it's not intentional. I think he's making a good point there. I think uh, this guy is named the biblical conservative. Like I said, he's horror body, but he's, he, but he's not off. He's making a good point. He's making a good point. And you can tell a lot about a show just off of the trailer. Think about it. This is what the marketing team for this show put together to try to draw people in and get people to support the show. They knew that people were going to get hyped up by the ratchetness, so they went and got the, the worst of the worst. I, I can just imagine what the rest of the show is like. To where it is considered black. Who is pushing that agenda? Who was doing that? And the fact that Steph Curry would put his name on this is insulting. My only thing is, why do you think that he's above that? Why do you think he's above that? Why do you think Steph Curry wouldn't put his name on that? Why do you think... What, like, what makes you think that these celebrities are not above that? Or are not above that? Why, why do you think... Why do people think that? That's just me, though. Um... I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be right back, guys. Sorry about that. T. Foster says, uh, giggity, giggity. Uh, shout out to Quagmire. If you really want to be honest, Quagmire proves that people really didn't care about people being sickos until it, until it got popular to, to, <laughs> to care about it. Quagmire been a sicko for 20 years. 
If we really want to talk about it, Quagmire been a sicko. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Quagmire, Quagmire been a sicko. Uh, if we really want to be honest, I mean, a lot of, they've been using a lot of these sickos for humor for a long time now, and it's it's really it's really the worst. It's really the worst. Um, Robert Oliver says tw- in 2013, TV critics called Seth MacFarlane's show "Dad's <laughs> Racist." MacFarlane has also been accused of using blackface on Family Guy. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, Seth MacFarlane. I mean, he's an interesting character. I'm not gonna lie, he he really is. Um. He, he he's he's an interesting <laughs> he's an interesting guy. I mean, just even even like you know, yeah. Some of these guys are just weirdos. <laughs> some of these guys are just weirdos, but it's okay. But you know what I mean? Like yeah. Hmm. <sighs> I yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I'll be right back one more time. One more time. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that for real. I'm back for real this time. Um, 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 the TSGT Foster. That's some groovy music, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, Quagmire has been a sicko. Yeah, whoo, whoo. Quagmire, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, Quagmire been a sicko, and yeah, it's a, you know, but it's funny though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, because it's funny. <laughs> um, RJ says black shows just aren't the same as they were back in the nineties and the two thousands. Nowadays, everything has to be woke. Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. I would just use the example of the Proud Family, right? When the Proud Family came out, it was a really decent show. It was a decent show for the age group it was targeting. They bring it back. They make it <clears throat> They make it woke. Now it's trash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's just, uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. Mm. I don't get it because at the end of the day, you know, like, and this is my problem because I, I had to cut myself off from a lot of fiction, a lot of the things that I enjoy because all of these writers just want to be woke so bad. All these writers want to be woke and they want to use these mediums that we've been, you know, these nostalgic mediums that we, we've been enjoying for years, and they want to use them as the catalyst for them to get their message to, uh, across to the world, their revolutionary message across, and it's just it's just frustrating. We can't even, you can't even use it for escapism anymore. I need people to really understand that. Remember, do you know once upon a time, things like comic books, things like cartoons, things like, um, you know, all these geek culture, video game, all this stuff, it used to be a form of escapism. 
a way for you to get away from reality, and now they trying to shove it through you. They trying to use that escapism to try to shove their narrative down, down, you know, down your throat. No pun intended. <laughs> uh, RJ says it all started with black ish. Yeah, I, and I agree. And it should have stopped with black, um, black ish. I honestly don't think it could, it could get worse. Um, I do, but I do, but I hope we don't get to that point. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating because it's like every TV show we watch, it's like they have to, they have to just glorify and glamorize the worst aspects of our culture, and it's frustrating. It is frustrating. Stereotypical. The young black boy is dumb and stupid. The mom has golden hair, blonde hair. And the teacher's smoking. A black teacher who's smoking. Look at all these, boy, they hit on every single stereotype just in this trailer. On of feet you working with. I think that was the point. <laughs> That's the only thing. I think that, that was the point. They hit on every single stereotype in this trailer. And that's what they using to try to draw people in. But, oh, it's the white man that's doing this, right? Oh, <laughs> right, it's the white man. Now, this is probably the most blasphemous part of this trailer. Just watch how they depict my Lord and Savior in this trailer. Look at that. God has pink fingernails. You have to see what they're doing with this. You have to see who's behind this, what agenda they're pushing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. I didn't see that one. That one got by me. Whoa. Yeah, that's, that's, damn. <laughs> wow. That one got by me. See, that's the thing. I'm not I'm not like super woke like how I used to be. So my lens don't be there for all of that kind of stuff. But like when that's crazy right there. Do y'all see that? They got God's fingernails colored. God. The creator. Jesus Christ. What? God just sitting there with just painted nails. So now they trying to, so basically they trying to depict uh, God as a soy boy. What? They're pushing so many different things. They're pushing black women over black men. They're pushing feminism. They're pushing a watered down, seeker friendly version of Christianity. They're preaching this cultural Christianity stuff with the black Jesus. And look at this. They're effeminizing God and effeminizing and making Jesus seem like he's lazy up there playing video games with the angels. Look at that. You got hood Jesus up there. Yo, so who this? Pookie Jesus. Can you believe that? They got Pookie Jesus. They made Jesus a Pookie. God, they, they made God a soy boy and they got Jesus as a pookie. Are you kidding me? Dad bods deserve better teas. At least they ain't got that drug dealing baby under my roof no more. Now look at this. This is why I say it's baby's kids. A drug dealing baby. A drug dealing baby looking like he's a miniature version of Cisco. Who in their demonic mind decided to make this show? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Who in their demonic mind decided this show is straight up demonic? Who in their mind decided? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Robert Oliver said this, and this is absolutely true. And this is one thing that I, I will say, even though, even though, like I've, I, I've said before, that I'm more aligned with Christianity, uh, but, um, 
you will never see anybody from the from the um from the um Islamic faith um uh, effeminizing <laughs> effeminizing the people in, in their religion. You will never see them effeminizing Allah. You will never see them portraying uh my, you know what I'm saying, Elijah Muhammad or anybody like that. You will never see them uh uh portraying them the way that they are. The, the way that they they're doing God. And, and I'm just saying it's just sad that it's just no matter what Christianity always has to be the religion disrespected. It always has to be the religion disrespected. And it's it's frustrating. I'm gonna just be honest, but this is this is sickening. I mean, it is kind of sickening. I mean, and I completely understand why he goes as far as to say that it's demonic. Because the truth of the matter is, sometimes people use these mediums in order to push their narratives. And some of the narratives that they push are, in fact, demonic in nature. That's the truth. That These folks are like demonic in nature. Um... RJ says these folks ain't even Christian. Yeah, fake Christians. <laughs> fake Christians. That's why you always gotta be careful about when people when they talk about uh when you talk about uh like you know, you know like when people like Jay Z and them talk about, oh, I'm I wanna thank God and I have to I have to think, what God are you talking about? When Democrats when they say, Oh, I wanna thank God, okay, what God are you talking about? Are you talking about Moloch? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Baphomet? <laughs> Which God are you talking about? We might not be talking about the same God. Um. Um. Yeah, I th- I heard that too. Seth is an atheist. Um. So that's true. Uh. So and that's why I find it even funnier that they always try to portray. They always try to portray Christians a certain way. Or try to portray. You know what I mean? It's just uh. Mm. Decided to even write this stuff. Childish, man. Bruh, I'm a baby. I can't get no more challenges than that. Now, here we go. Instead of talking about personal responsibility, instead of talking about the lack of fathers in the community, instead of talking about how. Facts. Facts. Every, you know. You notice that every show is always pro-black, but then they never want to actually address any of the actual issues that are going on in the community. Y'all ever notice that? <laughs> you know, what I mean? you know what I'm saying. Like, if y'all ever noticed that, all these shows always want to talk about the, like all these issues, but they never want to actually address the ones that actually matter. And a show like this, Good Times, is a great show that could show a great example of a family, which is. One of the biggest things that we need in the black community, family. Robert, Robert says, uh, RJ, figures. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it does. It says a lot. Um, uh, Margie says, hi. Hey, what's going on, Margie? Um, hope all is well. Um, Robert Oliver says he dare not mock Muhammad. He is afraid to. Yeah, them, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the nation don't play. <laughs> they don't play. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, well, yeah, that's exactly what I just said, RJ. Because Muslims will come for his head and insult him in their prophet. Yeah, they um Yeah, they they, they Muslims don't play and I I hate to say it, but I wish Christians <laughs> I wish Christians had that same that same veracity and that same loyalty. And people wouldn't be able to play with Christianity the way they do. Yeah, it, the Muslims they do not play. They will they will literally unalive you for 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 they for they faith. They will unalive you. You can't play with them. Even the Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites they don't even take what the Christians take. But the Christians take that turn of the cheek thing, and then they they take that out of context and try to. Use that to just justify being pushovers. No, <laughs> no, you need no. You need to have some balls about your religion. If you like, I'm just saying. These people, they sitting there. They look at this. They making a mockery out of this. It, this should not be okay. 
It shouldn't be okay. Um, uh, Molly says your beard is cool. No, oh, I appreciate it, my, <laughs> my little fake fake baby beard. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's just this is sick. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. If this show really was really was for the people. If it was really for the people, then it'd be highlighting the fact that the dad is around and it'd be more focused on the dad not looking like just a regular, you know, just just some regular ghetto black man. You know what I mean? It'd be showing the dad in the, in the highlight doing dadly activities. That's what the show would be about. It'd be about family instead of just putting this, this, this hood family in these ghetto ratchet situations. But that's just my opinion. We have allowed things, how black churches have allowed things to happen in the black community because people have not been taught the truth of the gospel. Nah, it's time to blame the system. Blame Whitey. It's the system. They put the guns and drugs on the streets. You talk about guns and drugs on the street, but you won't talk about the fact that that the only thing that the black community has to, is an example for it is just ratchet behavior. It's ratchet. It's ratchet. And that's what I'm saying. That's why I understand what, what this guy is talking about. I understand 100%. But who? That's a cop out. If they did put the guns and the drugs on the street, did they force you to shoot each other? Did they force you to take it? Did they force you to sell it? No, they didn't. Now, I will say they have created the environment to compel people to do that because of these policies, but they didn't force you. That's the key right there because people always love to say, they always love to say, always love to say, oh, you know, they put the, they put the crack in the, um, they put the crack in the hood. You know, they, 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 they put this in the community. They put this in the community. They did this. They do that. But tell me this. For the, for the, for the generation of crack babies, you know, the generation of, uh, of, of kids that grew up without their parents because of because of uh, the three strikes rule, tell me this. Did any of them put a gun to your head and tell you that you weren't going to get to live if they didn't, if, if, if you didn't do, if you didn't do crack, if you didn't sell crack, if you didn't do all these egregious things that basically set black culture back, that set black people back, all these things, did they make you do it or did, like he just said, did they give you an environment and you just chose to do it? Like, come on. They didn't make you do anything. They didn't make you do it. You have to pick, you have to, you made a decision and now decisions were made and now you don't like the repercussions. But guess what? That's life. I mean, like, come on. Uh, RJ says, I hate when people always say they put guns and drugs on the street. Why do people even use them in the first place? It's a great question. That's a great question. Why do people use crack? Because you wanted to get high. Why do people sell crack? Because they wanted to make money. You chose to do it. It's not like you, you didn't have a choice. Forced against your will. I'm tired of this argument, guys. And it's, it's just, it's just, it's just the same victim Olympics talk. It's the same victim Olympics talk, and he's right. He's absolutely right. See, when people make statements like that, that implies they think that black folks have no agency. That black people can't think for themselves. They're just animals that can't think critically or logically. That's ghetto. That's ghetto culture. This is getting dangerous. I'm going to just sit back and let you put yourself in harm's way. Why we got to be the most vulgar? Why? Why? Somebody please answer me that. Why does a black cartoon have to be vulgar? Pause, can't 
you just enjoy that? What do you got? You on Musk in the back now? No, you're the Evans of ghetto. You're the Evans of debauchery. You're the Evans of this culture that is not black culture. You're the you're the Evans of this agenda that they're pushing to make black. There's one thing that I do disagree with him on, and I'm just be honest. I'm gonna disagree. I think it is black culture. I think it is black culture because you can't just say that oh it's not all black culture because this is the future. It may not be the old black culture. It may not be the black culture of old. It may not be the traditional black culture. It may not be all of black culture. But this is black culture. Not just ghetto culture, but this is black culture. And what they're doing is they're painting a mural for everybody to see. And that's and that's what it is. They're paying this stuff like this is a mural for people to see what the culture actually believes it is. And that's the truth. We can't keep saying that it's not black culture when the culture says that it is black culture. You guys remember? Maybe maybe you 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 are familiar, but on TikTok there was a, I, I keep going back to this, but on TikTok there was a debate going back and forth where people were being called anti-black because they're afraid of hood people. Anti-black because you're afraid of hood people. And so I'm just I'm just saying it's like it's 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 frustrating. It's frustrating because at the end of the day as much as we try to like give grace and all that, I mean it is black culture. It is black culture, and it's the truth. People think that being black means acting a fool. Being black means being ignorant. Being black means having children out of wedlock. Being black means you don't take a personal responsibility. That's what you are. What about the struggle? We're black. It'll be here tomorrow. There you go. There you go. Black folks are constantly struggling. You see that? You see the imagery there put into the minds of young black people. I, I would think this is not marketed to children based upon some of the things I've seen. So they're putting this in the minds of black people, reinforcing this notion that America systemically racist, that black people can't do nothing because the system is against them. So the fun thing with the... See, the problem with Netflix is they know that people are going to watch this stuff as a family. So even though they don't market it for kids... Kids are still gonna watch it. Serpent That's is how does a serpent talk? <laughs> what what and not only that, but why is the serpent's punishment? Wait a minute, the baby, little baby, and baby baby. Too many babies around this crib. <laughs> this is horrible. And I'm glad to see that some black folks on Twitter recognize that this is trash. This is ghetto culture. This does nothing for the uplifting of flourishing in America, let alone the black community. Here's the first one. Blasphemous. Good times represented family, faith, morals, and lessons. It had meaning with the laughter and comfy it brought. And to attempt to poison that with the current Debauchery and ghetto culture is unforgivable, and it tells you where we are as a society. You notice that what they just said? The poison that with the current debauchery and ghetto culture is unforgivable. That's the current culture. So I'm not saying that the black culture that that, that you knew was never that way. I'm just talking about the current black culture. My family and I will not be tuning in. Amen, sister. I feel you on that. Let's look at another one. If I say that black parents have a responsibility to ensure their children are in school, I am a coon sellout. I don't like black people. Shaking my head. That's right. Black folks in the hood will more identify with this stupid cartoon than it would somebody getting out there 
owning their own lives, taking responsibility for who God created them to be, following a success sequence. They'll see you as a coon. They'll see you as a square. They'll see you as a sellout. They'll see you as a Uncle Tom, even though Uncle Tom was a hero of the story. But they'll call you those kind of names. They say you're trying to act white. Oh, do people really know about that, though? <laughs> You know, I love, I always love when people call people Uncle Toms and stuff like that because it's like, do y'all not know that in some stories he was actually the hero saving people's lives? You know, people that lived because of Uncle Tom? Just saying. That's how poison in the mind black people have become. And here's another one. Boycott Netflix, Good Times. This continual depiction of our community as ghetto, poverty-stricken, and stereotypical tropes is psychologically, yeah. What you meant to say is psychologically. I don't believe I don't believe it should be boycotted though. I'm gonna just be honest. I don't believe it should be boycotted. Just don't support it. If it gets low views, then it won't it won't last long. You don't have to actually call it a boycott. Just don't support it. Just don't support it. Logical warfare, anti-black and racist. They should all be ashamed of themselves. All of them. Yes, it is psychological warfare. It is planting these seeds in the minds of black people that all you are are poverty stricken, ghetto, ignorant, stupid. You cannot do anything because the system holds you down. You have nothing going for you in life. You have no hope. You have no hope. And so the Bible talks about hope deferred makes the heart sick, meaning that when a person has no hope, they are sick in their heart. They are sick physically and they're sick spiritually and they're sick emotionally. And that leads to the destruction and the decay that we're seeing in the community because people don't have hope because they're receiving messages like this. And here's the last one. Black people reacting. He just said something there. That's deep. That's deep because think about it. Would people behave the way they behave if they did have hope? If they had hope for better, would they really behave the way they do? Hmm. That's a great question. To that Good Times cartoon remake. That's a classic scene from Good Times. I say it over and over and over again. What has happened to the black community in the inner cities is intentional. Things like this reinforce the agenda that people are pushing. The agenda is to create so much animosity and angst within black folks. Um, let's see what RJ got to say real quick. RJ says, I, I agree with this guy. Black culture needs to be separated. Stop calling things black culture. Um, because hood is not a culture I want, I want any part of. And I, I agree. I agree. My thing is, it's just, um, it's just kind of like I said, I mean, if it, just from my observable eye, I'm not going to say that this is a fact. I'm just going to say from my observable eye, the culture is the one that is is saying that it wants to embrace hood culture or it wants the hood to represent them. You notice that whenever you hear somebody talking about they're the voice of the people, it's always the the ghetto people. They're always from the ghetto. They're always the only type of people that the culture even will let represent them have to come from a certain type of struggle, a certain type of... Um, have a certain type of upbringing, a certain type of lifestyle, you know what I mean, and and then get to a certain type of lifestyle in order in order for the culture to really embrace you. But you know, we see we see how it is with, with people like Diddy. With people like Diddy, we see we we see how that is. The culture embraces Diddy. Excuse me. But I, I mean, I definitely agree. I 
I definitely agree that black culture does need to be separated. And but I think it's more like a divesting instead of just separating into like little segment segments. That's just my opinion. Folks, that that's just my opinion. Um Yeah, that's that's something else. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, that's that's sad. Um <laughs> mm. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Guys, let me let me know what you let me know what you think about that. Are you um Mm. Oh yeah. Um, you can I almost want to play a clip <laughs> like the classic good times so people could see the contrast of the type of show that it was and the type of show. And I mean, I understand that there are things that you could get away with on TV now or that you couldn't get away with back then. And I get that. But it's kind of like Mm. Like when I say when I say black culture is in despair look at look just look at everything that that just look at everything that's going on. And I mean mm, I'm not I'm just when you look at the state of black culture, do, is the black culture, does does it seem to be on the uprise? Does it seem to be on the upturn? Does it seem to be moving for the better? And just being honest, I mean, it just, it. I think what he said about hope, the biblical conservative, what he said about hope, I think that that was very, It was valid. You know, it was very valid. Very valid. Mm. But uh let's go ahead and then um let's go ahead and talk about mm. uh oh. Uh, RJ says there was one show from uh, from recent that I think is positive and not negative at all. It's called The Wonder Years, which ironically, which is ironically a remake of a white series. Oh, Wonder Years! I haven't heard of that. I'm a, uh, I, I'll I'll look into it. I'll look into it. I haven't heard of that, but yeah. I, mm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that is kind of ironic, though. <laughs> it is kind of ironic. How do you feel about uh, uh how do you feel about them uh, basically blackwashing original white shows or shows that were originally white cast? I'm one of that. I feel like that's a good question too. I'm I'm personally against it because I feel like we can't we can't be mad we can't be mad when people whitewash our characters and then you know what I mean then at the same time I think just create new characters you know what I mean like I never like for instance I never want to see a black Clark Kent you know what I mean now you can create a black Kryptonian and call him something else <laughs> you know what I mean and he could be a Superman but I never want to see Clark Kent Superman be black just like with Spider-Man right we got Miles Morales I never want to see a black Peter Parker 
You know what I mean? Because Peter Parker was was not written to be black. So I don't want to see a black Peter Parker. I don't want to see a black Clark Kent. I don't want to see a black Bruce Wayne. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just that's just me. That's just me. I I don't want to see it. I rather I rather you just make a make an, a completely original character. That's just my opinion though. That's just that's just me. That's just me. Um. Uh, blacker, blacker man. Who's blacker man? Um. Um. Or just uh, we had we had Black Panther, but they killed him off. Yeah. I mean, technically, I mean, they could recast him. I mean, they they could recast Black uh, Black Panther. I mean, you know. <laughs> Black Lock Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, you funny. <laughs> um, it's sad that Chad uh, Chadwick Boseman died, but I know for a fact that Tom Holland died. They will re- <laughs> recast Spider Man in a heartbeat. Yeah, that's true. That's true, and uh. Um. That yeah, that's true. I mean, they would. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. That's you know, I would have much rather. Oh, okay, uh, RJ. That's a you just you just gave me a, uh, a thought. Would you have rather them recast T'Challa, you know, recast the Black Panther, or would you have preferred, or do you do you think it's cool that they let the the little sisters t- uh, take over? Oh, I guess you. <laughs> Oh well, you answered my question. <laughs> answer my question. Uh, Robert Oliver says, "Audio book advertised Black Sherlock Holmes." Wow. Or oh, Audible. Mm, wow. Black Sherlock Holmes. Uh. Black Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, like I said, I'm not. I don't rock with it. I don't rock with it. If a character was written to be white. You know what I mean? Then it's just, uh, uh. yeah, I don't rock with it. Uh, RJ says they should have recast in T'Challa. It was logical, but instead, I feel they took advantage of it. Yeah, and not just took advantage of it, but they also took advantage of it to a point to elevate a woman to a position of, the you know, a position of power. And that's 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 the thing. It's like. Nobody has a, a, a problem with, 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 like, good female characters. But it's like, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, technically Shuri does become Black Panther in the comics. So, I mean, it's not that far off. But I'm just saying. I mean, they could have recast him. It wasn't his time. Just because just cause it was Chad with Bozeman's time doesn't mean it was it was T'Challa's time. That's all I'm saying. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Sure. And that's the thing. It was like she, she, she was Black Panther, but it was like you know T'Challa was still right. It's like you said T'Challa was alive doing his own thing. He was he then he he was kind of like King of the Dead and all that kind of stuff. So I mean, like T'Challa was all was always around. They never killed him off. So that's why I'm saying it's like. Let the let let the character live. Let the let, you know what I'm saying. It's just killing the character. Let them live. Like I don't understand why they like why why they killed off Iron Man. I really don't. Really don't. Just send them off on a vacation or something like that, and then bring them back with a different actor. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's just me. My opinion. Um, I remember this too, and um, when they were talking about they were trying to get Idris Elba to play to be the Black James Bond. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. John James Bond is just a, is a, is a classy, smooth white guy. <laughs> um. 
You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm not saying that Idris Elba wouldn't be a good uh wouldn't be a good spy, but but how about instead of making him a black James Bond, how about you make another how about you make another character in the James Bond universe who maybe either works with James Bond or works under James Bond or is following James Bond's legacy, retire the actual character and then continue his legacy on the new, but don't sit there and try to make James Bond white black. You know what I mean? That's just my opinion. Uh, RJ says maybe Shaft. I love that series. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh. oh man. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, guys. Let me know. Like I said, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. I mean, I I was gonna talk about some of that Diddy stuff, but I'm honestly gonna talk about. Let me talk about that another night. <laughs> talk about that another night. Uh, you know, we just um, let's just keep it on this because honestly, this is this is important, and. This is this is how I mean. This is how our culture is represented. This is how our culture is represented. This is what this is how we we represent ourselves to the world is through our media. And when people look at what people look at and what they see, is that is that the Good Times cartoon? Is that something that you would want people to to see your 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 culture, your people, and be like, oh wow. That's that's what it means to be black in America, right? Because that's what originally these shows were doing. They were depicting what it was like. To, to, and it's just... Yeah. They, were de- uh, they were depicting what it was like. And... Even shows like the Cosby Show, they were portraying a positive image. You know what I mean? And it's like shows like the Cosby Show, shows like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. They were ma- they were shows that were making it like it wasn't just about oh you know we black. You know what I mean? It was it was just about oh we trying to we trying to you know. Be a family, and it's it's a story about a family that just happened to be black. You know what I mean? Nowadays, a lot of that stuff you could they couldn't even make it now because the whole premise is is them being black. It isn't about them being a family. Um, Robert Oliver says people got to have everything blackened. Yeah, that's the truth. I mean, that's the truth, and it, you know. Uh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I'm not really a fan of it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of it. Um, RJ says the Fresh Prince had a good mix of everything, positive and negative. Yeah, and that's that's why I think it was a good show because it was like you said, it was a good mix of it. It, it was a good mix, a really good mix. I mean. I'm not gonna sit there and say that the Fresh Prince of Bel Air was the greatest show ever, but you know what I mean. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was decent. It it was decent. It was, it was decent. Oh, uh, I mean, I think it was better than shows like Martin and that kind of stuff. I mean, I wasn't really into like the Martins and all that kind of stuff. Um, but just. Yeah, you just gotta think. I mean, I got There's a lot. It's just so much. It's it just it's it's just frustrating because it's like black black people have so much potential, but yet and still they choose to waste it on just endorsing this ratchetness. And it's just I don't get it. I don't. I'm gonna just be honest. I'm gonna be real honest. I genuinely don't get it. Um, 
Everybody hates Chris. That was another one. Um, do you know what the thing that I notice about those shows now, is, or compared to shows now, is that those shows had, you know, they had strong male figures in them. They had strong dads in them. You know what I mean? Like, not just... Not just men in general, but just dads, like fathers, like husbands. You know what I mean? And that's that's why this Good Times show is just it's so disappointing because let's just be real. If we're not watching a Tyler Perry movie, you're not really going to see that. Or a Tyler Perry show, you're not really going to see that. And... I just I I don't I don't get how it how how it it helps us get any further. How does it help us get any further? I think it's sad. I'm gonna be honest with you. Be be real honest. I think it's sad. I think it's unfortunate unfortunate that black people feel like the only way that they can portray themselves is in the worst um is <laughs> just in the worst ways. Uh. Um, RJ says, what I loved about Everybody Hates Chris is even though they lived in the hood, they didn't push the whole baby mama absent father agenda. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And and that's the thing with a lot of these shows. It's like, even though they lived in the hood, they weren't ratchet. You know what I mean? They weren't portraying themselves as ratchet. This is this is this good times trailer is literally spitting on the face of the whole premise of these shows. The whole premise of these shows is to is to is to show that all black folks ain't ghetto, ain't ratchet, you know what I mean, and show what it's really like for real black people. In the era where real black people weren't just ghetto and ratchet. You know what I mean? And even if that's true now, the people that aren't ghetto and ratchet are allowing the ghetto and ratchet people to speak for them. So what, I mean, what else can we do? What else can we say? What else can we do? What else can we do? Honestly. That's frustrating. That is frustrating. Um, be honest, guys. I'm not like I said. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna belabor the point. I just. I just. I just thought that this was worth discussing. Um. Hopefully, I'm gonna try to. Uh, I'm gonna try to get back on the game plan and you know have some more stuff this weekend. I'm still working on trying to try to get some panels, some stuff, man. And you know, I, like if y'all would be interested in actually, you know, hitting the link. Coming up, I mean, I, I, I would, I'm not opposed to that. So I mean, yeah, I'm not opposed to that at all. So I mean, some, some of these streams, like, I would, I would definitely love to hear like people's inputs. And also, I mean, yeah, it's just, um, it's just a lot. I got a lot of stuff planned and going through a lot of stuff. So you know, these streams been kind of rough. So. You know, so if you've been noticing that they kind of rough, uh, just just give me a little grace. I I appreciate you for uh, sticking it through with me though. Seriously, uh, <laughs> for real, I'm, it's just it's something else. But um, but yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna hold y'all. I just you know I appreciate you for stopping uh stopping by. You know, kicking it with me, and you know I just hope y'all are well. Hope you're doing well. And with that being said, I'm J-Red Unfiltered, and I am signing out.